Welcome to Eloise Behind the Scenes. If you haven't seen my short yet, who hasn't let things get a little out of hand? You really should. Spoilers for Eloise. In this series, I will be walking you through the process of making five sets. This is part one of a three-part series. I broke it up because otherwise it would be way too long. Today we're going to be tackling the bedroom where Eloise hides her violent implement and the bathroom where she gives herself a pep talk. As an attempt to save space and material, I tried to use a box I made out of foam as a base for each room or a support because I'm quickly running out of places to put sets in my room. The first step is to paint the floor a gray color I'm not very fond of because I ran out of the colors I need. While that dries, I work on the floorboards, cutting the ends off of popsicle sticks and painting them a dull brown color. After ordering new paint, I repaint the place with a more vibrant color. Then I design my wallpaper. To come up with ideas, I go to Pinterest and fight the urge to not just look at artwork I like. After having enough inspiration, I work on the wallpaper that screams modest farmhouse where murders could happen. After that, I print the wallpaper, cut off the trim, and struggle to put it together so everything has as clean of a seam as I can. Now it's time to install some floorboards. I hot glue gun the floorboards down, cutting up the boards as I go so I can have some length variation. I make frames for the artwork I made. If you want to see how I made said art, consider joining my Patreon, where you'll get accesses to time lapses of behind the scene art, high resolution PNGs of said art, and more. Okay, seamless plug over, I decide that some frames will just be popsicle sticks and stirring sticks, but for the really fancy one, I broke out the toothpicks, cutting them up and gluing them to the edge as some decoration. I paint the frames a nice rich brown and cover the decorations a nice bronze. Yes, I did just buy sparkly paint and I'm excited to use them. I hot glue the paintings in the frames, but then remembered I need to put the plastic sheets in front of them so it'll be like glass for the picture frames, but was lucky enough to not damage the images, at least not in any way that could be seen. But don't worry, I'll do this again later when I decide I really want to sign those little paintings. I bring Eloise's skeleton to help me get the sides of the bed. It's also at this point that I'll show you the reference images I used for the props. What a cozy little house. I approach the bed just like the tree you'll never see because it wasn't fucking in the shot. Don't worry, I'm not bitter. Anyway, I twist the wires into a bed frame, then I wrap a thin layer of wire around the bed. I did this because it helps clay stick to the wire, giving it more grip, and I thought maybe it would help with hot glue too. I cover the frame with hot glue, working to not get a nasty burn like I did with the fucking tree. Not bitter. I cut little bits of hot glue hanging off and cover it with matte Mod Podge so I have a nice matte surface to work with. I start working on the mattress, carving away some foam. When the foam is appropriately mattress-like, I hand sew felt around it. Off camera in the middle of the night, I spray paint the bed frame a base black. Unfortunately, this black is very shiny, so I'll cover it with matte Mod Podge later. I paint a chest I bought from Michaels. I took some leftover fabric, hot glued some lace to it off camera. I then glued some tin foil to the blanket and glued another sheet of fabric to the other side. The reason I do this is so the blanket is posable and it can be moved if need be when I'm doing my stop motion scene. Then I sew the blanket sheets together. After that, I make some nightshade berries, and with that, we have all the props for the bedroom done. And now it's time to move on to the bathroom. Before moving on to part two of this video, I want to quickly ask you to please subscribe and leave a like if you've been enjoying it. Now let's move on to making the bathroom. This bathroom isn't in the farmhouse. Instead, it's a rundown public facilities Eloise uses for contemplation. Like all other environments, I gather inspiration from Pinterest. I also didn't include this for the other one, but I did do an incredibly rough layout for the bathroom as well as the other sets. I start this set by designing floor tiles on Procreate, using references I found on Pinterest. After designing them, I print several sheets and trim the white edges off. Then it's time to bring out the foam and start carving the wall tiles. After I paint the tiles, making the bottom edge of the wall black and the grout gray. Then I go in and paint the tiles white, pulling the gray grout color back a little bit. Next, I break out the duct tape and secure the walls together. Then I attach the floor tile design to some foam board. At first, I try with painter's tape, then I go with glue. My goal being to use something like a wooden implement to press the indents in between the tiles and make it look more realistic. I then cover the tiles with glossy Mod Podge so it looks nice and shiny. Then I bring in some acrylic wash, which is just paint mixed with a lot of water. In this case, it's the dirty water I built up from today. I use that to dirty up the bathroom and make it look nice and grimy. 
I dry brush some greens to make it look moldy and I bring in some watercolor blocks and oil pastels to help dirty up the set. I crush some of the watercolor palettes and spread it around. Again, this would be easier with chalk pastels, but I don't have that yet. Now it's time to make a tiny mop bucket. I start with a toilet paper roll, cutting it down to appropriate size. Then I hot glue them back together in a bucket shape. I line the top and the bottom of the bucket with wire, hot gluing it into place. And I cut out little cardboard pieces to be those little bucket flaps that the handle will be attached to. I glue them down and now it's time to make them up. I get a bunch of coarse string and cover it with white paint. I quickly get some cardboard and glue to the bottom of the bucket as a nice base. Now I work on the mop handle using a tiny glue gun stick. Glue sticks are amazing sculpting tools all on their own. I round one end of the hot glue stick using a lighter. Take a break to cut the excess off the bucket's base. Then I go back to the mop handle. I use a box cutter to rough up the mop handle and start making it look like this old beaten up wood. When I'm happy, I hot glue a few strips of paper at the bottom that's gonna act as those little metal things at the end of mops. I bring in the definitely not completely dried mop string because I'm impatient. I try something with painter's tape before abandoning it. I hot glue the strings to the mop handle and trim off the excess string. Then I realized I didn't glue way as much of the string down as I thought, and I slowly glue the rest of the string on. Then it's time to paint. I covered the little paper bits with a nice gray base coat and the mop handle with a light brown and a series of darker browns. I used some metallic paint to the bucket and added some rust off camera. I believe it was just paint. I also added some metallic silver on the mop's metal bits. Time to make the bathroom sink. I reference another one of Queen City Mini's amazing videos. I make a mold using some hard clay, then run some clay through the pasta roller, put tin foil on the mold, and put the soft clay on the tin foil to make my shape. I cut off the excess clay. I add a little flat worm around the edge of the sink. I smooth out the sink and add another worm around its base. I attach the back part of the sink and I'm almost done, but then I realize that it's way too big. I try and retry to make this sink a bunch of times off camera and then I decide I'm just gonna use the hard clay that's already the size I want. The reason I didn't go with this first is because I knew the clay would be very difficult to work with. So as I carve out the hole for the sink, I'm getting a lot of unwanted texture. I then do all the other steps I did before with the way too big sink. I bake it and cover it with a white base coat. I paint a little silver ring at the bottom of the sink, then it's time to dirty it up with some acrylic wash and dry brushing. I also touch it up with some white paint when things go a little overboard. After that I make the faucet with earring bits and beads. One really cool thing I learned from Queen City Mini's videos is how you can combine unique looking beads to make something else. I put the beads and earring backs on this thin wire, high gluing them together with a few beads of hot glue. While my camera struggled to focus, I trim off the excess wire, repeat the same process for the other sink knob, I can't remember what it's called. I cover the sink with glossy Mod Podge so it looks like real porcelain. Time to give the faucet and other sink bits a black base coat to help add some shading and make sure any bits I miss are covered. I dry brush them with a nice silver, then hot glue them down on the sink. I add some more aging. Now it's time for the final step, working on the sink's pipes. I try using a Q-tip trick I saw in Queen City Mini's video. The idea is to cut the ends off the Q-tip, wet them, and bend them to a desired shape, but that doesn't work. Instead, I offer a wire, hot gluing sunder bead to the top and the bottom of it, acting as those little pipe connector bits. I also use a sink to measure how long I need it to be and the desired shape I will bend the pipe to. Then it's time for a black base coat and silver dry brushing. I also hit it with some red as an attempt to add rust. I will also say I should have waited for it to be fully dry because I definitely wiped off some paint, but what are you going to do? With that, I glue the sink and pipe in place and add some necessary blood from a messy Eloise. And with that, it's time for the final reveal. I'm really happy how these sets turned out. The detail in the bathroom turned out amazing. I love the little faucet and the mop bucket. Rusting helps add this grimy look. The wallpaper in the bedroom looks amazing, really adds an old farmhouse feel. And I love the suitcase, thanks to Izzy and Fifi for their help with that. And all the props inside really adds that realism. 
If you guys enjoyed coming along this journey with me, I encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And if you want to show more support, consider joining my Patreon, where you'll get access to high-resolution PNGs of behind-the-scene art, time lapses, PSD files, and Procreate files, and your name at the end of the video. Speaking of which, thank you to my salty and spectral patron, you help keep my mausoleum nice and tidy, and my bowls filled with chips. Bye guys!